Sarkaniemi is the second most popular amusement park in Finland, just behind Linnanmaki. And both these Finnish parks share a lot of similarities, both good and bad. Both have solid ride lineups and exciting atmospheres, but they are incredibly small and compact parks. In this video, I will explain why Sarka Niemi is an interesting park and well worth visiting in this review. Sarka Niemi originally opened in 1969, but not as an amusement park. The park originally opened with an aquarium, planetarium, observation tower, and children's zoo. Then in 1973, the 25-acre amusement park was added and that has been the focal point of Sarka Niemi today. 25 acres is quite small for an amusement park, but like many city parks, Sarka Niemi is very dense. There is zero wasted space here. You have a mix of compact cloned coasters, flat rides, and a few unique rides with sprawling layouts that cross over and under other rides and pathways. The compressed nature of the park results in an electric atmosphere and is further amplified by Sarkin Niemi's location. The park is located in the heart of Tampere, which is Finland's second most populous city. The park feeds off the energy of the city, and the setting is one of the park's biggest strengths. Sarkin Niemi is located on a peninsula that juts out into the Black Gulf. The combination of the water and surrounding buildings create some of the most picturesque views of any amusement park. The park itself looks great too. Sarkin Niemi has a surprising amount of shade towards the front half of the park, and the rides look good too. Everything seemed to be well maintained. The only slight gripe from an appearance standpoint is that a few rides towards the back of the park look sort of like carnival rides with their busy backdrops. Getting to Sarkin Niemi is extremely easy with public transportation. The city buses service the park directly. However, getting to Sarkin Niemi with cars can be a bit tricky. Since the park is located in the middle of a bustling city, you have several obstacles. First, traffic. Nobody likes traffic and there's a lot of it near the park. Second, the lack of parking. Sarkin Niemi only has a modest sized parking lot and it cannot fit everyone on a given day. It's located near the main entrance and if you want to park here, I strongly recommend arriving early. This lot costs 15 euros as of 2021. If the parking lot is filled, you can park at a few different garages within a one mile walk of the park. If you need to use these, Sark and Niemi's website lists the ones they recommend. Visitors have the option to purchase individual admissions for the planetarium, aquarium, observation tower, or rides. One thing that surprised me from my visit was that there was no option to purchase individual ride tickets. That's something you typically see at most city parks. I'm not sure if this was related to COVID or not, but the only way to access the rides was to purchase a rides pass for roughly 39 euros. During my visit, I spent almost all my time in the amusement section. The one exception was when I took a ride atop the Nasa Nuela Observation Tower, which is interestingly the tallest freestanding structure in all of Finland, reaching heights of 551 feet or 168 meters. A ticket atop this tower cost roughly 8 euros and it was well worth it. The views were stunning. I got a bird's eye view of all the park's rides set against the beautiful sea and skyscrapers. Nasa Nuela and the other attractions outside the amusement park have separate hours than the rides, so just keep that in mind. On the day I visited, the observation tower opened a few hours before the amusement area, so I took advantage of that. I visited on a sunny Saturday late in the summer of 2021 and the park was quite busy. The physical queue lines for many rides were not particularly long, so they often bled into the midway. This made the park feel even busier than it was. Lines moved at a steady pace thanks to the staff. They would load rides as fast as possible. The only issue was that many of the park's rides had limited throughputs due to small trains limited number of ride vehicles, or long cycles. All of the roller coasters, including the kiddie coaster, had roughly half hour waits, and the park's premier flat rides had similar waits. The two longest lines were for the water rides. I was stunned this was the case even with temperatures in the mid 60 degrees, 
but both the Flume and Rapids ride had waits approaching 45 minutes. Sark and Niemi has five roller coasters. Four of them are clones, but they are clones that I enjoy. The park also used to have a sixth coaster in the Prototype Intimate Halfpipe Coaster, but was removed in 2019 due to technical issues. The one custom coaster at this park is Tornado, which is the undisputed star attraction for me. This is a rare Intamin' Full Circuit Inverted coaster, and while it feels distinctly different than the Bolger and Mabillard Inverts, it compares quite favorably. Tornado has an exciting location past trees, pathways, and rides before diving underground for its signature element, the inline twist over the load platform. This inversion is one of the scariest near misses of any coaster, while also offering some incredible hang time. The coaster also includes another inline twist, and three other inversions focusing more on positive Gs. And Tornado is a very smooth coaster too. I have a separate review going into more detail, but Tornado is a great coaster. Hype is the tallest, fastest, and newest roller coaster. This premier ride Skyrocket 2 clone is one of the best installations out there. This one not only offers stunning views of the water and city, but this is one of the few to operate without comfort collars. Having your entire body free for the experience makes the hang time on the barrel roll and the intense ejector air time on the ascent and descent even better than usual. Trombi is a Zamperla Volare. I know most enthusiasts find this model uncomfortable, but I actually enjoy these coasters for their forceful turns and the scary hang time of the barrel rolls. Moto G is a Zamperla Moto Coaster. This coaster is a repetitive layout, but I do like the deceptively strong initial launch and profiling into the turns that causes these tiny pops of airtime. This is probably the park's best family coaster, but I just wish they had a family coaster that could accommodate guests shorter than 48 inches. The only coaster that can do that is Vau Tomato, a Zierf Kitty Coaster. Based on this coaster's dismal throughput, this may be worth prioritizing early if you have kids or want the credit. Vau Tomato is part of Angry Birds Land, which is a sizable children's area themed to the popular mobile game. The area is colorful and features plenty of attractions for younger guests. You have a mixture of play structures and rides. Complementing the adult coasters are a series of flat rides. You have the usual family ones, but there are a few standouts in the thrill department. X is an intense Zamperla discovery, alternating between hang time and crushing positive Gs, and this is one of the ones that will invert you. High Voltage is a disorienting Zamperla power surge that will flip you more times than you can count. And this one is extra wild because it's one of the few that still has a rotating base. This rotating base induces more flips than usual. Tursky is a Zamperla disco coaster that extends down a thin sliver of the peninsula, so you get these fantastic views paired with the usually dizzying ride experience. And then there are two other unique flat rods that probably aren't worth riding despite their uniqueness. Boom is an exceedingly rare adult Zamperla drop tower. The views are incredible, especially because the tower spins throughout but the drops are forceless. Then you have Takeoff, which is a hoose spinning ride that I have never seen before. The ride doesn't travel particularly fast, nor does it pull crazy Gs, but the spinning can be disorienting due to all the axes of rotation. Moving on to the water rides, you have a fun log flume in Tukihoki. I love the wooded layout that is intertwined with Tornado. And there are several smaller drops along the course. The one downsize of the final drop is super shallow. This flume gets you fairly wet, especially if you're seated in the back if the logs stack returning to the station. When this happens, a surprising wave of water will shoot down the back of the rider in the very back of the log. Then you have Koskase Kailu, the park's Intamin River Rapids ride. The layout is well shaded and has a solid series of rapids, but the most interesting thing about the attraction is its location. It's located outside the amusement section towards the zoo. It's quite the walk from all the other rides, but it was the only place they could fit it. So do I recommend Sark and Yemi? If you're in Finland, absolutely. This park has a top-notch atmosphere and a solid ride lineup. 
Tornado is a very good inverted coaster, and it's the main course for the roller coaster enthusiasts. And the other attractions are a worthy supporting cast, covering all sorts of genres. Compared to Finland's other amusement parks, I think Lin and Maki reign supreme. But the second spot is a toss-up between Powerland and Sark and Niemi. Powerland has better rides, but Sark and Niemi has a superior atmosphere. I strongly recommend trying all three parks if you ever find yourself in Finland, so you can form your own opinion. So those are my thoughts on Sark and Niemi, the enjoyable amusement park in downtown Tampere. Have you been to this Finnish park? What do you think about it? I would love to hear your thoughts about Sark and Niemi down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.